As a dungeon master, part of the fun of D&D for me is creating rich, living worlds with cool locations to explore and exciting plots to become tangled up in. I like writing, and probably go a bit overboard when I come up with the details I need for an adventure. But when I run a game, I don't want to slow things down as I flick through pages of notes. Instead, I often try to distill everything down to one sheet of paper with visual cues, shamelessly stolen from the concept of the one-page dungeon. But you probably already knew that, because of course you succeeded on your Say vs. Justin. Like I said, I take a lot of notes when I prep my D&D sessions, probably more than I need to. I reference them a bit when I'm running the game, but mainly taking those notes is just kind of a mental exercise for me to organize the elements of the game in my head. Stopping the game to actually skim through those notes to find specific details is going to be time consuming and a bit distracting because my notes are basically just big long blocks of text. I might use some bullet points or different colors to highlight important details, but it's still pretty dense. This usually isn't a big deal for high-level details or plot threads, but where it starts to break down for me is when we get to a dungeon crawl. In my kids' games, the players really like combat and exploring a map, so I try to get to a dungeon or battle map in every session. The general details of each room are usually pretty clear in my head, or often improvised, especially things like what the room looks like or any sounds or smells. But for more specific details like monsters, NPCs, or loot, I need to take some notes. I used to use index cards for this, and I still do sometimes. With an index card, you can focus in on the specifics of a room or two and not get lost. But more recently, I've been using a different tool, a copy of the dungeon map itself with notes right next to each location. This is typically either a small scale printout of the map if I have an electronic copy, or if I don't, sometimes I'll just take a picture or scan it right from the book it came from and then print it out. Next, I'll read through the dungeon and put key details on small sticky notes. I like using sticky notes instead of just writing on the map because they let me change things up if I want to, and they also stand out a bit more. I try to put the sticky note close to the location it's describing, but I also put the room number on the sticky in case I'm running out of space. Then, when I'm running the session, I have this cool at-a-glance visual summary of the dungeon helping me keep things clear. As I mentioned, this was inspired by the concept of the one-page dungeon. I'm sure many of you have seen these before. As the name implies, the challenge is to include everything you need to run a dungeon on one page. Some of these are as simple as a gridded map with brief details of each room. Others use artwork to help inspire the dungeon master and help tell the story. And many of these are compiled every year on this site. I'm putting this video together in July, which happens to be the month for the One Page Dungeon Contest. Each year, going back to 2009 I think, the One Page Dungeon Contest comes up with a theme and then invites everybody to come up with a one page dungeon based on that theme. Part of the draw is that it is a competition, and there's some beautiful submissions by excellent artists that make you think about dungeons in completely different ways. But part of it is just challenging yourself, and knowing that even if your dungeon doesn't win, there's still a chance it could get published and put out there for others to enjoy. Oh, and there's also a youth category where kids can submit their dungeons as well, and potentially have their dungeons published right alongside the adult entries. This year's theme was, And Still They Rise. So inspired by all the cool dungeons that people have submitted before, my son and I decided to enter the contest this year. Here's mine. It's called, Yay, we won! So now what? It starts off with the players having beaten a Dracolich. But in doing so, they find themselves trapped in a collapsed dungeon. The idea is that now they have to find their way out while carrying as much of the treasure from the Dragon Horde as possible. And to add a little more pressure, the dungeon's flooding. It's an interesting challenge to write a one-page dungeon. I was super excited to write it and probably came up with way too many ideas. I wanted to include the theme in a meaningful way, and still they rise. I wanted to include unique mechanics around hauling out a bunch of treasure and maybe losing some of it along the way, all while racing against the clock of a flooding dungeon. I wanted it to be action-packed, but with multiple possible routes through the dungeon. And I wanted to throw in a little humor. I wanted a lot out of only one page, and I easily wrote twice as many words as would fit onto that page once the dungeon was added. It forced me to take a closer look and revise every line to make sure essential details were there, and then any extra space got filled up with, like, flavor text and snarky comments. I originally picked out some of the monsters I wanted to include based on licenses I had for artwork on Shutterstock, but in the end there was no room for that extra artwork. At least I got to include the Necromancer. Which brings up a good point. While I love writing, I've never been that confident about my artwork or illustration skills. I'm okay with Photoshop and layout tools, which helped out quite a bit, but I was going to need some help sketching the actual map. So, the bulk of my dungeon was built out using the free version of Dungeon Scrawl, which is this great online app for quickly building old-school-style dungeon maps. 
It includes tools to help you draw gridded maps with different types of rooms and hallways, as well as a library of artwork and icons that you can drop onto the map to help flesh out the details. As you're building the map, it's automatically adding that cool old-school cross-hatching to the background. Or, if you're feeling extra nostalgic, you can swap that out for the hardcore pale blue style. If you're looking for a map making tool, this is a great one to start with, and you can export your map to use in your own project under a Creative Commons license. I'll include a link to Dungeon Scrawl below, along with a link to my dungeon as well, but hopefully soon it'll be included in the 2023 One Page Dungeon Contest compilation, which is usually available from DriveThruRPG. How do you prep your game notes? Are there tools you use to help keep them straight? Do you even use game notes? Drop a comment, click the stuff, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you.